Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join us. Have you ever wondered, thought about, or asked yourself why are MPPT charge controllers and inverters made into a single or all-in-one device? In this video, I will explain the reasoning behind why I think this push to build both the solar MPPT charge controllers and inverters in the same device. So without further delay, let's jump right into it. I'm going to break this down into three categories. First category is the wiring, fuse, and breaker cost. So here we're going to take a look at a traditional solar charge controller that has to be wired then to the traditional inverter. Then it gets wired from the inverter to the battery. So you have between that you have the bus bar. You have to have fuses or breakers between that and connect all three devices. So you can see there's more wiring involved, more cutting, more crimping, just more work overall to wire that up. So now let's take a look at what I will refer to as a all-in-one device, which is the MPPT charge controller and the inverter built into one. You wire that same unit to the battery bank. It's less wiring involved because you just have to run the wires from that all-in-one unit to the bus bar, from the bus bar to the battery bank. So you see there's a lot less wiring involved, fuses, breakers, um, battery lugs. So therefore, your cost is less. So the all-in-one unit has the built-in fuse breakers built into it, thus making it easier to wire up. And they will make the breakers and the fuses compatible to that unit because they've been tested by the manufacturer. I've seen where um, wiring up traditional MPPT charge controllers to the inverter trips with the breaker in between them because it's reached the capacity or the amperage that it's stated it's supposed to do, but it doesn't. It trips before that without reason or explanation. And then upon further investigation, you open up that breaker and you look and it's inferior materials where the, the grade of material that's used is not really rated for that amount of amperage going through it. So therefore it trips sooner than the capacity stated on that breaker. So having an all-in-one unit, say like the EG4 6000 XP uh, inverter charger, has the built-in breakers in there. And you don't have to worry about figuring out or getting the right breakers to wire up with this unit and worry about it. if it's inferior or compatible. It's going to work 100% of the time. Second category is efficiency. In my attempt to explain the next category, I'm going to try not to get too technical or bore you to death. Before I began working in solar, I was an IT professional for 27 and a half years. So say I had to set up an email server and a web server. Well, I would install the email software on server A, physical server. And then I would install, say, a web server on server B. So I would install it, the software on server B. So say that server A needs to make a request to server B. That request had to go through what is called an OSI layer format where it's broken down into seven different layers. So I'll demonstrate. Here, the request is from server A to B. So the information starts with that layer seven, which is the application layer. Then it works its way down to the physical layer, which is on the ethernet cable going out of the server over to server B. Then it goes from layer one and works its way all the way up to layer seven, which is the application layer. And then it's processed on server B. This effort takes some time. So in the process of this, this information, which is encapsulated into a packet, a number of things could happen. The request in the packet could get interfered with along the way from server A to server B by what is called a packet loss or a retransmission to server B. Or server B could be busy processing a request from another server. In a nutshell, if that request does not make it on the first try, it is lost and, retrans and retransmitted again. In that same time, the efficiency is affected. Once the virtualization technology came into play, it allowed both servers to run on one physical box, thus eliminating the whole seven layer construction and deconstruction process from one physical server to the next. This made the communication between server much faster, 
thus the efficiency increase. Well, in the same way, I believe how the IT industry figure this out is the same way that the solar industry have figured this out too. That by building the MPPT charge controller and the inverter together into one physical device gives it that efficiency edge because the communication happens right at the circuitry board. The communication doesn't have to traverse from one device through the wire to the bus bar to the other wire into the other device. So I believe this is the reason manufacturers are putting both devices into one unit because of this efficiency factor. Now I'm gonna have some folks in the comments section that's gonna say, hey, if the unit goes down, both the MPPT charge controller and the inverter's down, well, you always have a backup. Never just have one unit. I've learned in the IT world a formula called N plus one, where I'd always have a backup server or two configured and sitting in standby mode. I would do the same with solar, have an extra unit or two on hand. The third category is maintenance. With more equipment to maintain comes more work, more troubleshooting if something goes wrong. When you have an MPPT charge controller and an inverter connected and one of these devices have a hiccup, sometimes it can be hard to diagnose at first glance. Then with in-depth troubleshooting, you may find the inverter or or MPPT charge controller are not compatible. I've seen this in service calls particularly when the MPPT charge controller and the inverters are different manufacturers. In contacting each manufacturer while troubleshooting, they tend to blame the other manufacturer and their product. On the other hand, if you just have all in one unit, like with the charge controller and inverter built in, it's less to troubleshoot and typically quicker to diagnose the problem. In conclusion, in my opinion, it's better to get an all-in-one MPPT charge controller inverter unit because it is less to install, more efficient at functioning, and less maintenance to administer. I hope you found this video to be helpful and educational in your quest to be power independent. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel as it will greatly help us make more content like this. Until the next video, take care.